Thank you, Dr. Pratap, and thank you, Dr. Ajay. Uh, modulators of glucotoxicity and lipotoxicity, that is the basic science, really the basic science that is uh, required to be understood. And in fact, uh, the topic was selected by me because I wanted to know about this topic, and I came to know a lot about this topic uh, after going through the literature, and many, the thing, many of the things that I didn't know. So we all know type 2 diabetes is generally viewed as a clinical syndrome with variable phenotype. However, it could be polygenic in nature, and this polygenicity, that is multiple factors involved in the pathogenicity, can also be talked about in the form of gluco and lipotoxicity. For years together, we have been talking about simply insulin resistance, beta cell dysfunction, but what is lying behind it? is hardly known. We believe that beta cell dysfunction causes hyperglycemia, but we hardly remember that chronic exposure to hyperglycemia causes beta cell dysfunction. So the terms were coined since 1985, glucotoxicity, 1995, lipotoxicity, and glucolipotoxicity was coined in 2004. So what is glucotoxicity? Ideally, the glucotoxicity refers to the adverse effects of higher than normal concentration of glucose on cells and tissues, and that includes all the cells and all the tissues of the body. However, of late, the definition has been restricted to the ability of excess glucose to impair insulin secretion and action, resulting in a vicious cycle of worsening glycemic control in diabetes mellitus. So, now the glucotoxicity is talked in reference to diabetes only. We all know this slide very well, genetic predisposition. On one side in lin the phenotypes, it may lead to the glucotoxicity. On the other side in obese people having high BMR, it may lead to free fatty acids and uh, lipotoxicity, and both will combine together. However, one should always remember, lipotoxicity, Lipotoxicity, yeah. Lipotoxicity comes only after hyperglycemia, that is glucotoxicity. Lipotoxicity does not precede glucotoxicity. So the debate was going on for years together, what is more important, glucotoxicity or lipotoxicity? But off late, we have got lots of uh, references and evidences to show. So let's start with few evidences. Number one, Increase oxidative stress in type 2 diabetes. Multiple biomarkers have been utilized to find out that uh, biomarkers of oxidative stress, which suggest that in type 2 diabetes, the oxidative stress definitely goes high. Evidence that chronic hyperglycemia can increase the reactive oxygen uh, species levels. So what is ROS or reactive oxygen species? Actually, it is a metabolic reaction continuously producing reactive oxygen species such as superoxide, hydroxyl radicals, and peroxidases. These are all substances that can cause the damage. ROS is generally involved with lots of evidences. We know that ROS has generally been involved in inflammation, carcinogenesis, aging, and atherosclerosis. But now we have realized that ROS is also involved in type 2 diabetes. And it is glucose itself. Remember, it is the glucose itself which is capable of generating ROS. And therefore, glucose itself is toxic to the cells, especially the beta cells. There are a couple of markers like 8-HDAU and 4-HDAU. And these markers are seen to be increased, especially with high diet with sucrose. This 8-OHDG is an indicator of oxidative damage to the DNA, and that is the reason which increases during type 2 diabetes. So now we realize oxidative stress, multiple biomarkers, ROS, multiple biomarkers. What next? There are three ways in which the oxidative stress can occur. One is skiff base leading to amidory compound. Second one is electron transfer system leading to increase ATP. And then the third one is the glucose with the help of glucokinase activity and insulin biosynthesis. So these three 
different pathogenesis that has been hypothesized for increased ROS activity. Not only this, this increased ROS activity, as we have seen, is detrimental to the beta cells, and beta cells would deteriorate. The glucose itself, or the glucotoxicity itself, increases insulin resistance even in liver and fat cells. So glucose is not only toxic to the beta cells, the glucose itself is increasing the insulin resistance, especially in cases of liver and skeletal muscle and adipose tissue. So, for years together we have been searching what increases the glucose, but we have hardly realized that it is glucose itself which is causing insulin resistance and which is causing beta cell dysfunction. Evidence is to show the antioxidant capacity of islets. Now we have realized that it is the oxidative stress of islets. What's the capacity of islets as compared to rest of the tissues? So these are all antioxidant enzymes and oxidative stress has been considered by many as an explanation. However, most of the studies on the oxidative stress were carried out till 2008 only on non-islet tissues. But it was only after 2008 that we realized that the islet has been the lowest intrinsic uh, antioxidant capacity, which means islet cells contain the lowest antioxidant property. As you can see here, chronic hyperglycemia causing ROS, but add to it this something, low capacity of antioxidant enzymes. So, the armamentarium that is required to fight out the oxidative stress is minimal in islet cell all across the tissues of our body. So, not only beta cells are exposed to glucose, oxidative stress, ROS, but they've got very little or poor defense system as compared to rest of the organs. Evidence that antioxidant drugs and overexpression of antioxidant enzymes in beta cells protect against glucose toxicity. Does this mean that if you add antioxidant and if antioxidants reach beta cells, it would protect? Yes. In animal studies and in preclinical studies, nicotinamide, dysphagmine, these are all substances like metformin and troglitazone, superoxide dismutase and catalase, all these substances have protected beta cells in the diabetic rats, which are known as GK rats. Same is the influence of vitamin E, although all these things have not been still accepted in the human beings. The trials are going on. So, now we know type 2 diabetes is associated with increased markers of oxidative stress. Glucose can increase the beta cell level of ROS. Antioxidant treatment can ameliorate hyperglycemia. And overexpression of antioxidant enzymes in the beta cell protects against the increase in oxidants. Then what should be the antioxidant strategies to protect beta cells from hyperglycemia? In other words, what could be the clinical implication? So, two sorts of clinical implication. Activation of antioxidant defenses and simultaneously repression of ROS producing systems. So one that destroys beta cells, they have to go down and one which protects the beta cells should go up. And then there are, you can see as in the lowest portion, practically 16 systems that are being tested these days on human beings and probably will come to know them in next near future. One of them is metformin. Remember, we go on saying metformin reduces insulin resistance, but now, now we have come to know that metformin probably does it by acting as an antioxidant in the beta cells. Same way, this pathway we have been knowing for years, heme, bilirubin, bilirubin. But something that we hardly know is, this is because of antioxidant action. And this has been proved in beta cells when heme oxygen has won seems to mediate uh, protective responses to the beta cells. So probably this is one of the important weapon that would be utilized in near future. Same way, this fluorocetagliptin that also 
is protective by way of its antioxidant property. So now, next five years, we are going to see the utilization of antioxidant properties of most of the compounds to protect the beta cells. Okay, coming to lipotoxicity. Lipotoxicity is an acquired cause of impaired beta cell function. Only after chronic hyperglycemia sets in, it is lipotoxicity that sets in. And what it causes? There is ample evidence that fatty acids, which are required for the metabolism, they become toxic when present at elevated concentration for prolonged period of time. They can cause decreased glucose-induced insulin secretion. They can cause impaired insulin gene expression and increased cell death. However, this cascade of free fatty acid becoming toxic, which is known as lipotoxicity, does not start before chronic hyperglycemia sets in. We just heard Dr. Makar saying that we should not allow HbA1c go to 7, then bring it back. One second goes to 7, bring it back. Because during the period that it goes to 7 or above, you are exposing beta cells to chronic hyperglycemia, which not only is detrimental itself for the beta cells, but it sets in a cascade of the fatty acid, which becomes lipotoxic. So lipotoxicity and type 2 diabetes, you can see as the BMI goes on, the chances of type 2 diabetes goes on. Prolonged in vitro exposure of islet cells to fatty acids decreases the insulin gene expression in presence of high glucose concentration only. Without high glucose concentration, fatty acids do not become lipotoxic. So the term that was coined later on was neither glucotoxicity nor lipotoxicity, but now the term is glucolipotoxicity, meaning thereby it is the glucose that sets in or rolls in the cascade and then the lipids join them. Under circumstances where both fatty acids and glucose are elevated, accumulation of metabolites derived from fatty acids esterification would inhibit glucose-induced insulin secretion and insulin gene expression. So only when both of them are high, this can happen. Hyperglycemia is required for lipotoxicity to occur. They are consistent with a clinical observation that, and this is something that we have very frequently seen also, that all diabetics may have abnormal lipid profile, but all those who are having abnormal lipid profile will not have type 2 diabetes, at least to begin with. So that means the beta cell function is usually normal in patients with disorders of lipid metabolism, but the vice versa is not true. However, in presence of chronic hyperglycemia, you can see the destruction that fatty acids can do to the beta cells. So ultimately, the most important uh, message that should come to us is the main regulator of pancreatic beta cell functioning and regulator of insulin gene expression synthesis and secretion is glucose. High glucose levels increases the cholesterol absorption. Coming to one more uh, uh, pathogenesis, how glucose can be toxic. And the answer is, you can see the gene expression. Glucose not only increases ROS, it not only increases the oxidative stress, but it completely changes the insulin gene expression. And now it has been shown in multiple trials especially three uh, gold standard trials in 2018 that hyperglycemia itself changes the insulin gene expression, as you can see in the second slide, and the insulin becomes ineffective and insulin resistance increases. How does it happen? Chronic exposure to hyper, uh, hyperglycemia, insulin mRNA changes, insulin promoter activity reduces, Insulin gene transcription factors reduce, which are known as STF, X, uh, STF1, PDX1, IPF1, IDX1, and MEFA. This leads to reduced glucose-stimulated insulin secretion, and the insulin content of beta cells go down. This is all in response to chronic exposure to hyperglycemia. So summarizing, 
in human studies of type 2 diabetes markers of oxidative stress are increased in type 2 diabetes it has been shown in all trials across the globe reducing plasma free fatty acids levels may decrease the relative risk of type 2 diabetes but it does not completely ameliorate the possibility of type 2 diabetes which means it is secondary to hyperglycemia glucolipotoxicity are secondary phenomena that are proposed to play an important role in type 2 diabetes patients with type 2 diabetes continually undergo oxidative stress elevated glucose concentration increases the levels of reactive oxygen species in beta cells islets have intrinsically low antioxidant enzyme defenses this is very very important and now since 2018 three more trials have come in which have suggested that islet cells in the body are having the lowest antioxidant enzymes the three enzymes that i showed you antioxidant drugs and over expression of antioxidant enzyme protect the cells from glucose toxicity and this is probably going to be the important weapon to maintain the beta cell function in near future lipotoxicity to the extent that can be attributable to hyperlipemia occurs only in the context of pre existing hyperglycemia whereas glucose toxicity can occur in the absence of hyperlipidemia meaning thereby the role of diabetologist is still more important than the role of so called lipidologist or so called cardiologist because hyperglycemia is a prerequisite for lipotoxicity to occur the term glucolipocity glucolipotoxicity rather than lipotoxicity is more appropriate thank you very much